Something's coming from the sea! I'll check it out. Star Fox sucks. I don't think there's a game series out there that's more stuck in its own past than Star Fox. The only thing comparable would be Sonic, but Sonic actually has five good original games, and sometimes, probably on accident, Sega produces something that works. Now look at Star Fox, alright? So here are all the games. Now here are the ones people actually like. And here are the ones people like that aren't just a remake of the original Star Fox. I think you can see the problem here. The Star Fox series has been subject to so many unfortunate events. Make a shitty game. First, Star Fox 2 gets cancelled because Nintendo wants to focus on next generation hardware. Then Star Fox Adventures comes out, and this thing wasn't even originally a Star Fox game. It was going to be this completely different action-adventure platformer, but it just so happened to have a fox in it. So, they reskinned the whole game with Star Fox characters. It has nothing in common with the Star Fox series. There are no spaceships or guns or anything like that. It's just a platformer. And it doesn't even do that right. It plays like sh Then Star Fox Zero comes out and the controls are so convoluted, nobody even knows how to play the game. At no point did I feel empowered by this control scheme. It was only a hindrance. The game is designed around motion controls and it can range anywhere from difficult to impossible to play the game without them. Are you supposed to look at both screens at all times? How many eyes does Miyamoto have? Although you can lock onto enemies that come into view, it's only the camera that's affected, not your aim. And it took hours to become fully acclimated to Zero's new rules. These blunders are basically the reason why the franchise hasn't been allowed to develop for almost 25 years. The first game is a decent game, but of course its biggest selling point were its fully functional 3D graphics, which were a technical marvel at the time. Beyond the graphics though, the game has a deceptively simple structure, very similar to an arcade game. It has these three level paths you can take, and each of them are probably less than an hour of gameplay. But that's completely okay in 1993, because look what you're going up against. Sonic Spinball? Bubsy? A little bit less than three hours of no filler content is pretty good for the time. Then you have Star Fox 2. Now this game pushes the established norms set by the first game in big ways. Instead of three static paths, you now move freely around the map trying to intercept missiles and ships before they get to Corneria. You can pick two characters out of the now six members of Star Fox to form your team, and who you pick actually matters as different characters have different ships. There's even a completely new free-range walker mode for planet battles and destroying capital ships from the inside out. It manages this perfect balance of keeping the essential parts of what makes the first game good, all while advancing the series. Star Fox 2 stretched the Super Nintendo to its absolute limit, and it went down as one of the best games on the system. Oh yeah, it uh, never came out. Now, in the summer of 1997, Star Fox 64 actually comes out, and it's a massive hit right away. The original Star Fox never felt quite at home on the Super Nintendo, and it has a slew of technical issues that are nowhere to be seen in the 64 version. It's more realized 3D world, smoother frame rate, and good for the time voice acting, really set the bar higher up for the series than anything that could have been done before. But Star Fox 64's dirty secret that everybody knows is that it's just the first game, really. I mean, it does bring a land vehicle and Star Wolf into the mix, which were completely new ideas. But it's basically a soft remake. Nowhere can you see this more than in the map screen. Not only is it linear like the original, but there's literally two, yes, one plus one, two new levels in 64. Does this make Star Fox 64 a bad game? No, not at all. The problem is, is that without the cancellation, the series at this point would be the first game, the second game, and a remake of the first game. All right. From this setup, we can see that the core elements that all the games share are what make up a Star Fox game. We also know what can change and what probably won't. But that's not what happened, of course. It's more like this. In a way, Star Fox 64 becomes the perceived sequel to the first game. All right. What core elements do these games share? They share everything. Everything is a core element. Well, that's a problem. It seems like soon enough everyone will have their perception of the series cemented and will only like the first game and its remakes. Hopefully there's a great sequel coming along to move the series forward. Damn it! That pretty much sets in stone what the series will be remembered by. This means there will always be that now ancient arcade route system. There will be no new characters. The story will always be Andros attacking Corneria. What? What's this?
It's got its rough spots for sure, but it represents an attempt at evolving the formula. Star Fox Assault takes on this strictly linear progression that allows the story to drive why you go to each area. At one point, Wolf even helps you and you get to stand on the tip of his ship blasting away stuff with a big ass gun. The first level has a replica of the final boss from the 64 game get destroyed by the new enemies to show you how much stronger they are. They replace the Star Wolf Pig with a Star Wolf Panther because Star Wolf Pig gets turned into this monstrosity, then dies because you can actually kill off characters in a game that isn't a remake. I'm glad the series has finally got back on its feet and it's ready to move forward. Nobody liked the game. Thank you.